Hi guys, today we're going to do a mini tutorial on using for loops in JavaScript. So go ahead and download uh, my JavaScript template. You can see the link below. And open it with your favorite editor. I'm just, I'm just using Visual Studio Code here. And this is where we're going to do all our work inside these script tags. And we're going to output our text to this div here. That's why it's got an ID. So the first thing we need to do is declare some variables. Declare variables. Secondly, we're going to loop. So use our for loop here. Loop over, let's say, an array. Loop over our array. We'll probably have arrays eventually. So let's change that. And create our HTML string. And finally, we're going to output our HTML. Right, so to declare variables, first we need a string, don't we? An output HTML. Just uh, make it an empty string. You needn't do that. You don't have to do that, but it's good practice to make it clear what we're using it for. Now to output that string, you just need to use document get element by ID. So the ID that we've already got here is this one. Put that in quotes. And it's inner HTML is what we're going to set. Equals output HTML. That should work. Uh, you can then title this if you want to. That's just what appears on the browser tab. So we'll call it a for loop. And we'll say it's about animals animals. Okay. So we're going to loop over our arrays and create our HTML string. So let's create an array. Declare an array. It's going to be about animals. So use square brackets. Just put a list of animals that you like. Let's put five animals. Cat, dog, goat, turkey, and what? Buffalo. Buffalo. That's how you declare an array. That's an array of strings. Now in our for loop, just say we want to print them to the screen. Well, we just, in a for loop, in every for loop, there's going to be three parts. One, two, three, separated by uh, semicolons. The first part is what runs prior to the loop beginning. So we're going to set up a counter variable, in this case i equals zero. That's just tradition, they usually use i. You could use any variable in, honest, in all honesty. The second part is the condition. Now this is what condition must it meet to continue looping. So in this case we want i to be less than the length of this array. So animals.length. So that's five, isn't it? So as long as it's less than five, it'll continue looping. And the final part of the for loop is what happens after each iteration. We just want to increment, we just want to increment i, so add one to i. So eventually this will finish. So we know that we're looping over, we're going from zero to the length of this array. Remembering in an array, this is position zero. The first position is position zero. So we want to um, add to our output. So we have to use plus equals here and not equals, because if we used equals we'd, we'd be overwriting it each time. We want to add to it. So plus equals animals i, so the, the ith position, which will be incrementing each time. Okay, so let's see what that does. Just open your file in any browser. So you can see it's stringing all the animals together. Cat, dog, goat, turkey, buffalo. Doesn't look very nice. So what's one way we can handle that? Well, you could add spaces, you could add breaks. How about we use a table? Output HTML plus equals, remember? Let's uh, put a table element here. Table, an HTML table. And we need to close the table. So after the for loop has completed, we'll close the table. 
Now each table requires a row, requires rows and data. So in here, we'll open the row and here we'll close the row. So I'll create a, it'll create a row for each animal in this case. And we need TD too. That's the table data. So table data, remembering to use angular brackets, plus animals, plus closing table data. There we go. Let's run that. That looks better. Cat, dog, goat, turkey, buffalo. Now just say we want to add another array. So we can do that. Let's call it color. So we're going to add a color to each of these. So think of some colors for animals. Brown, black, white. Let's just do three. These don't have to be the same length. They can be any length because we're using this command, aren't we? Dot length, so it'll keep track of how long each of these are. We want to put another loop in here to to loop over. Just say we want to put we want to prefix each of these animals with these colors. Then we'll need to put another loop in here. It's called a nested loop. So in here we can go for variable j because we've already used i. We can't use it again. So use the next letter in the alphabet. J equals zero, following the same format as above. Um, color. Sorry, j is less than color dot length. J plus plus, and we want to put our uh, string here. We'll use we'll keep the row outside. We'll keep the row outside. So that means we'll have rows of the different colors of animals, and we need to put the color in here somewhere, don't we? So color. For example, we could have a brown cat, couldn't we? Color, remembering the letter that we're using for color, J, plus a space, plus the animal. Let's give that a whirl. Brown cat, black cat, white cat, brown dog, black dog, white dog, and so on. So it's going through every combination and putting it on, on its own row. Good. Now what if we wanted to put another array? Let's do that. How about we have an adjective? Um, let's put four of these, okay? So we'll have wild, so a wild buffalo. A hairy, a hairy cat. A domesticated goat. And one more. Adjective, a crazy, for lack of a <laughs> another adjective, crazy, a crazy turkey. Right, so again, we want to nest this, don't we? So, for the, what, do you th what letter do you think we should use? Well, just use the one after J. And it's going to be based on the adjective, so k is less than the adjective dot length, the adjective array that is, k plus plus. Braces, again we want to put this inside the innermost array, uh, innermost uh, for loop. We'd probably want to move, so that our rows aren't too long, we'll move our row to just outside the innermost the innermost um, for loop, right? So we'll, we should be, yes, so every row will contain um, color animals. We'll put the adjective in here. So we'll have, for example, a wild brown cat. So adjective, remembering its letter is K plus a space. Let's give that a go. And there we have it. Three nested for loops. So wild brown cat, domesticated brown goat, 
a crazy black turkey, and a hairy white buffalo. And that's four loops. I'll post this uh, file up in the description section so you can uh, download it if you need to. Otherwise, thank you for listening. I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope you've learned something about for loops and I'll talk to you next time. Cheers!